before the tutorial begins, I wanted to give you two key concepts about the for loop with break. The first thing is about the for loop is that once the for loop activates, it halts execution of everything until it's done doing its thing. So the for loop is not going to be denied while it's doing its process, which is very quick, of course, but while it's looping, it's halting any other execution within its flow. The break in the for loop has to come from within the loop body itself. And that's why we have the custom event in there. What the break allows us to do is stop the loop from looping. So you can almost think of the for loop as kind of like a Tasmanian devil and it's got to do its routine and it can only be stopped by another Tasmanian devil. And that devil has to come up to him and go, hey, stop, knock it off. So it has to come from within. <laughs> the break has to come from within the loop itself. That's why the break is triggered in this case from the custom event within the loop. And it, the break is there to stop the loop from looping. And that's the only way you can really stop it is from within the loop itself. You can't break it from an external source outside of the loop. Okay, anyway, I hope that helps just as a preface to what we're doing. Hey, how's it going? And I decided this week I'm gonna do some tutorials on flow control because they're so essential to developing games and they're an integral part of the engine. So what we have here is today we're just exploring what's called a for loop with a break. So what that looks like is there's this pad over here, we trigger it, and then it prints out a string 400 times. So I'll just show you how we do this. This won't take very long. And as an added bonus, it kind of includes, again, what a custom event is. So what we're gonna do is we're just gonna go into file, new project, and we'll just do a first person game. This won't be very long and I'll try to go as fast as I can. So anyway, we're going to right click here and we're going to go to blueprint class and we're going to go to actor and we're just going to double click into this and then we're going to dock it up here. And then we're just going to go add and we're going to add a plane here like this and we'll just drag it down like that. And then under its collision preset, we're just going to put it to overlap all dynamics. And then we're gonna go for and add a box collider. And we can just leave it like that then because we're not blocking it, we can, the player can just walk right over it. If it weren't set, the collision was set differently then I wouldn't be able to even reach the box. Okay, now we have our trigger. So with the box selected, we're just gonna come down here and go to on begin component overlap. And it pops us in here. And this is just won't take too long. The first thing I know that we're gonna need is a string variable. So I'm just gonna go ahead and make that right now. And we'll select a string, which is pink and I'll compile and save that. And then it's just going to say, this is number whatever. And then we're gonna append that with whatever number it is. So we can save that. We've got that done. So we're gonna right click and what we're searching for is a for loop with break, not a for each loop, but a for loop with break. And Behind the scenes, we can't see this, but whatever we set this index to is basically setting the size of our array. So we can just put it to a thousand like that. And then as soon as the player steps on the plate, it's going to trigger this for loop to start. And now here's another flow control node, which is a branch node. And it's so popular, there's a shortcut key for it already. And you press B as in boy, and you left click and it comes in automatically. And we're just going to have it search for conditions. So we're gonna say, go around 400 times, and each time you do, print out a string. And when you get to 401, we want you to go false and go to the break. 
So what we could do is do the false part first. So we're going to create a custom event to trigger that. So I did a separate tutorial about what custom events are, but they're very easy to make and very, very helpful. So what we do is we're going to go to right click and we're going to go add event and we're going to add a custom event. I don't even have to give it a name, but it has to be created before we can call it. So this event is going to be called and when it's called, it's going to tell the loop to stop looping. So now that we've created the event, I can call it. So now I can go call custom event. It's right here. And so when this thing goes false, it's just going to call over here and that's going to trigger our break. Simple enough. Now for our break, our condition that we want is we want it to go around 400 times and you can do this any number of ways, whatever worked for you. But for me, the less than makes sense. So what we're going to do is I'm going to right click and I'm going to search for a less than node. And like I said, you can do this any number of ways. Now, once we click this in here, it's going to give us, so it tells us what everything is here. So this is integer A, this is integer B. And if I click over, it says returns true if A is less than B. So this is B, so it's going to keep firing as true until it gets to 401. So it might seem like a weird way to do it, but that's what makes sense to me. So it's going to go around 400 times until it gets to 401, and then it's going to be false, which is going to stop the loop. So we just put this in here like this. So it's going to keep going around and around 400 times. And each time it goes around, it's going to print a string. So we'll get back to that in just a second. And what is the string going to print, you might ask. We're going to look for something that's called an append function. And this is interesting because it's the very one on the bottom. It's appending a string. And so we're going to drag our variable here, get it. This is going to be A. And then we're going to drag the index in here. It's going to automatically convert an integer into a string value. And all we have to do is drag this into here. Go over this real super quick. The character is going to step on the plate. It's going to trigger the loop to start. It's going to go around. This has a capacity of up to a thousand elements. It's going to go around 400 times until it gets to 401 and each time it goes around it's going to print a string. And then on the 401th time, 401st time I guess, is going to trigger as false. It's going to call over to here and break it. And each time it loops, it's going to send the index value over here to here. And it's going to append to what our string says, which is this is number. So it's going to go this is number zero, this is number one, this is number two, and it's just going to keep going all the way up to 400, and it's going to append as a string. Here we can determine how long the string stays on the screen, we'll say five seconds. And that's it. That is a for loop with a break and a custom event to call a break. And I'll go compile and save, we'll go to first person. Now to start this, I just have to drag, let's see, where is player start here. Let's player start. So I'm going to just drag this right over here next to the gun All right, over there and then I'll go play. There's our plate. We'll walk over to it and as you can see it's printed out a string 400 times and we can keep doing that and that is it. That's all I had for today. So thanks for checking in and I will talk to you next time.